hopefully we've got some rain coming. It's not looking good, but I'm still hopeful that where I'm going, either it's not raining or there might be a dry spot. Not good. So in today's video, I want to talk about the right mindset that you need to have if you want to have any success in tennis. This is what I call the love of the game guys this is the love of the game I was driving out here it was pouring I could have easily turned around and said the weather sucks it's not gonna be a practice today I'll take a day off but I love the game so much that I gave it a shot anyway and after the rain comes sunshine at least in Florida that's the case so it cleared up and I was able to get a good 45 minutes on the wall. I'm absolutely exhausted. It feels like 100% humidity. It's almost 100 degrees. I'm completely drenched. And this is what I love about tennis. This is why I'm going to keep doing this until I'm 80. And you know what's funny about it? It's actually not fun while you're doing it. It's actually a, quite a nightmare. Just imagine yourself playing tennis in a sauna. It's not fun. But I'm doing it anyway because I love it. And all the little things that come with it the weather maybe i'm in a bad mood maybe something is hurting in fact as i was walking to the bench i actually stepped in a, in a hole and i rolled my ankle i'm fine it's going to be okay but these are all things that are uh, not fun about tennis but we put up with it we'll learn to love these things because we love tennis and if you don't love tennis if it's too hard for you if it's too difficult to learn if it's too exhausting, too time consuming, if you just don't love it, then there's nothing you can do. Then you gotta pick something else to do. You can't force someone to love tennis. Either you love it or you don't. Also, there are some cases where people fall out of love with tennis. For example, one of my best friends in Split Croatia, uh, she was one of the best players in Yugoslavia. She was beating a lot of the players that were professional players. Some of them were even in the top five of WTA rankings. So she could have easily been a top 100 player or more. But at the age of 15, she decided to quit because she didn't love tennis anymore. She ended up playing in college. But then after college, I don't think she has hit a ball in 20 years. So this can happen as well. You can love tennis and you can fall out of love in tennis. And there's simply nothing you can do. The only way to succeed in tennis is if you love tennis hitting the tennis ball. And guys, in order to succeed at this game, you gotta know how to play. Or in other words, you have to learn the right fundamentals. Have you ever seen players that have been playing for 40 years and they've never taken lessons and they just stagnate at a certain level and never get better? This is what happens when players don't learn the proper technique. It's gonna be absolutely impossible to succeed in tennis unless you learn the fundamentals of the game. Okay guys, I need some shade. Badly. I need to sit in the shade for a little while to recuperate. That was a hard session. So, you need to love the game in order to succeed in tennis. You need to learn the right fundamentals. But you know what else? You need to compete in order to succeed in tennis. As weird as that sounds, 
many people avoid competition they're practice players so they will rally they will do drills they will take clinics and when someone asks them to play a set they refuse this is one of the most common ways how players stagnate with their game you have to compete if you want to maximize your potential as a tennis player you know what else practice and matches are a complete different story because tennis is a game after all because of the scoring system we are going to experience different emotions on the match court that we're not going to experience on the practice courts for, for that reason you have to compete guys you have to test yourself in a real situation you need to learn how to play the actual game it's not always about technique it's a game after all and you have to figure out how to win also you have to figure out how to cope with losing matches with uh, blowing big leads and all the great things that are going to happen to you when you play matches where maybe you get a little lucky and save a few match points and you win a match all these things are only going to happen in real match situations so you have to compete in order to succeed in tennis and guys you know what else you need in order to succeed in tennis is emotional stability and this is somewhat related to uh, competing and the different emotional things that you're going to experience on a tennis court so if you're someone that's very emotionally unstable that is freaking out from nervousness when they have to play a match and therefore they refuse to compete I've met people like this they are so nervous and so anxious about playing they're basically scared to lose and they don't compete and of course when you do that you're going to limit your chances of improving at tennis also emotional stability can mean dealing with losses some people get so distraught from losing that they stop competing after all and they might stop playing tennis because of that it is something that i'm not sure exists in another sport where uh, you are out there by yourself and all the responsibility is on you and some people just can't handle that so you have to have the emotional stability to handle the unique characteristics of the sport of tennis which is truly the only individual sport even in boxing where it is an individual sport at least the guys are touching each other by hitting each other and they have a coach at ringside and tennis is the only game where you're truly out there by yourself and some people just can't deal with it so you absolutely must have emotional stability if you want to compete and have success at the game of tennis hi guys I'm going back out there to serve you're probably thinking this guy is insane he almost had a heat stroke now he's going to go back out there but this is what it takes do you think I have a serve like I do uh, by accident no it's because I put in all the reps I served on a daily basis as a junior and then when I was in college I served on a daily basis as well and I still do it because I just love it I love serving and this is the reason why at my age of 44 I can still serve pretty well which brings me to the next point that you need to have as a tennis player if you want to have success which is hard work you have to be hard working you have to put all the reps in this is something you hear all the time but it's really uh, the absolute truth without this you absolutely have don't have any chance because the game of tennis is so complex it requires a lot of repetitions whether you're talking about hitting balls on a practice court or whether you're talking about playing matches you're going to need hundreds of matches to go through all the different scenarios that tennis is going to give you and without these reps without this experience you have absolutely no chance to succeed at tennis Caught. Caught on the line. Okay. Oh, wet ball. No, no, not the wet ball. Let me see. Oh, I think that was wide. Now, guys, do you think this was luck? Did I make these serves by accident? Believe me, this is a result of hard work. A lifetime of me hitting serves is the reason why I can make serves in a row why I have a serve that's not going to fall apart in a match and why I have a serve that's going to give me free points in a match it is only because I put in all these reps so you have to realize that hard work 
is an absolute necessity for your chances to improve and have success at the game of tennis. So you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, this Nick guy is crazy. These are not really mindsets, what he's talking about. For example, you know, emotional stability. It's not really a mindset. It's something that you either have or don't have. Of course, you can work on it a little bit. And the same goes for the love of tennis. Even either you love tennis or you don't love tennis, there's really not much you can do about that. You can absolutely do something about hard work. But even if you are not a conscientious person as a personality trait, you're going to have a very difficult time being a tennis player and the same goes for competition that's closely related to emotional stability where you avoid competition this is something that you either thrive for or something that you naturally avoid is going to be of course difficult for you to succeed in tennis so when it comes to mindset the only mindset that you need to have if you want to have success at tennis is setting small goals the opposite of that will be setting unrealistic goals and that is the number one reason why tennis players all across the world fail at the game of tennis another variation of setting unrealistic goals is the people that have no goals whatsoever so they are just playing tennis for fun they're just hitting balls and these people always stagnate there's absolutely no way to improve at tennis unless you have goals and when you do have goals you have to set them realistically you have to go step by step let me give you some examples so if you are an intermediate level recreational player a 3.0 level many of these guys they always dream about becoming a 5-0 this is going to lead to you either quitting tennis or becoming very frustrated because if you're thinking about 5-0 that is so unrealistic that is so far away it's so many years of hard work ahead of you if it ever happens anyway because let's face it the level 5.0 it's a very tough level. A lot of the 5.0s have played competitive tennis and that's something that you can't really make up if you started tennis later in life. So if you're a recreational player at the rating of 3.0 or even 3.5 and you're dreaming about this, this is going to cause you to get really frustrated and maybe quit tennis altogether. So what you need to do is go step by step. If you're a 3.0, you try to get the 3.5 and that's going to be hard enough. Trust me. Now even worse are junior players who are dreaming about playing in Wimbledon or being a professional tennis player and this is maybe the number one reason why people get frustrated and they quit tennis I get so many messages it was so funny that I made the video is it too late for me to turn pro and in this video I said that you should think about this you should set small goals and despite me saying this in a the video there were so many comments of kids asking me is it too late for me to turn pro so either they didn't watch the video or the message that didn't sink in so I'm saying it again the number one thing that you need to do in tennis to have any success is to go step by step and to set small goals if you're fantasizing about a crazy goal like playing in Wimbledon and for example you are ranked number 200 in Florida uh, this is a recipe for disaster now professional tennis players are doing these kids a big disservice because they will often say if you really want something if you really work hard towards something uh, you can achieve it and I they will say I always wanted to be a professional tennis player and now just because I worked hard I became a professional tennis player but unfortunately you can't compare yourself to them because they did it the right way 99% of the professional players that you see on TV especially the ones that are having success at Grand Slams they were on the top of their rankings as juniors in their countries or maybe even on top of the rankings of the ITF world rankings naturally the next step the next goal in the process is to turn pro or win Grand Slams or big tournaments in general this is naturally the next progression for kids that are unbelievably good as juniors but if you're a parent of a kid and your kid is ranked number 200 in your state and you're dreaming about Wimbledon this is going to turn into a nightmare into a disaster and your kid is most likely going to quit one day because of it this is a such an unrealistic goal the kid is one day going to realize it is not going to happen it's going to be so frustrating and there's a danger of quitting tennis altogether so if for example if your kid is ranked 200 in the state set a goal of becoming top 150 in the state and then top 100 and you take it step by step what you will realize is these small goals are really difficult to achieve actually it's not so easy to jump from 200 in your state 
to top 150 in your state. But when you achieve that small goal, you're gonna have a happy feeling, you're gonna be so happy about achieving something that you set for yourself, and this is gonna push you on to achieve the next goal after that. So not only are you gonna be a happier tennis player, but you're gonna play tennis longer. What I want is that people make tennis a lifetime sport, just like I did. I'm gonna play tennis for the rest of my life. There's no doubt about that. There's no way I can fall out of love with this game.